Welcome to Timo Tail TV. I'm Eric Sugarmore, and I'm here with Timo Tail's best buddy, Ryan Martinez, Leo. I'm still winning Mota, mm -hmm. and Chris the Beard Lar. Hey, last week, you know, I was out. I missed the games because I had to work. I want to apologize to my Panthers, to our fans, but uh, I'm proud of our Panthers the way they performed. Uh, they they performed well in front of Burger King, so. I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic about that. So, hey, man, this week we got the uh, second round of the playoffs this Saturday. Last Saturday there were some great games. You had the Panthers narrowly, narrowly losing to the Raiders. Mm -hmm. you know, a drop mm -hmm. touchdown pass by Sadiq in the end zone. I mean, uh, he's usually Mr. Reliable, uh, but uh, he dropped a touchdown pass that could have tied the game and possibly won it with an extra point. Then you, you had the... <clears throat> The Packers also losing to the uh, <clears throat> to the. Did you guys play the 49ers? 49ers. 49ers Quadruple man. overtime. You would have knew that if you was there. Mm. Yeah, I know. I, I know. I apologize for that. Wow. Well, and uh, they like overtime. That's crazy. I heard there was a, a bad call that was made. It could have possibly uh, sealed the victory for the Packers. And uh, sounds like the Packers organization is going to go to the uh, committee and find out if it, that could be overturned. But it's probably going to be too late by the time that happens. And then you. You had the, the the Cowboys beating beating the, uh, the Ravens. Ravens, and the, mm -hmm. I heard the Ravens had a meltdown, as well as the Eagles and the Vikings, mm -hmm. and the and the that Eagles a had game. a meltdown as well. So um, hey guys, we're all proud of you. All you guys that uh, end up having to go <laughs> go home on a. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not that funny to get eliminated from the playoffs, bro. It's not. You're that, right. Right. That, it hurts, man. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. That's why I'm laughing to keep from crying uh -huh. about this. Yeah, yeah. But hey, so we're gonna go ahead and start with those uh, those first four o'clock games. I mean, the first one o'clock, two thirty game. But before we go there, anybody gonna say anything about last Saturday's games? No. The good thing is there was four good games. It wasn't like one team absolutely blew somebody out. I mean, the the Ravens and Cowboys. It was a, it, you know it wasn't as close as some of the others, but it was a good all around. And I think this league has arrived. I think it's exciting to see. Uh, uh, the direction we're headed as a league. So, yeah, I gotta agree with you, Chris. It's, um, all the games were phenomenal. Each game probably could have been a game of the week. They were really close. Every team went out and fought their hearts out and played well. And it just most of the games came down to a last second play. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean th these last week games it just shows you. I mean that one play uh, separated. Uh, you know, winners from losers this week in three out of the four games. And then the other game, too, it was still very close uh, up until the end where the Cowboys pulled ahead. So this is just this is just an, any given team can win this week, I think. And now with it, it being the final four, I believe everyone's in the even playing field going into this week. Wow. So, hey, let's get started with that first uh, – Semi-final game with the 49ers and the Raiders at 2.30. Chris, I'm going to say it right now. This is the real Urban Bowl. The Raiders versus the 49ers. This is the real Urban Bowl. I think these are the top two best teams left in the playoffs. Uh, the Raiders are two seed. 49ers are four seed. Uh, and in power rankings, uh, the Raiders had second in offensive defense. The Raiders were first in offensive defense. Uh, in my mind, this is the MVP versus the coach of the year going at each other. The two teams that are very similar in how they've been built. Um, and it's been a great story and run for the 49ers uh, so far. But I look at the two teams. The 49ers have, have beat everybody they played except for the Cowboys and the Eagles. Um, Raiders have played, uh, have beat everybody except for the Cowboys. Uh, when I look at this, I, I had to do some deep thinking on this one. And uh, I, I just think as, as great as the as this story has been with, the, with Felix and Freddie, I think the story comes to an end this week. And I think it's actually going to be the Raiders. I think the Raiders are, are playing out of their minds. I think if you get in a shootout between the Raiders and 49ers, I think the Raiders actually will overcome them. And I, they're going to win this game 45-42. to Sorry, Niners. Great run. Maybe next year. That's interesting because last week you picked the 49ers yep. to be in the Urban Bowl. Yep. So I see after playing against the Raiders, you have a chance. I of see heart. some things. I see some yeah. things, yes. You know, and gonna, that's it. I'm going to continue on. I'm going to stick with my pick, you know, with the um, Raiders playing the Cowboys in the um, Urban Bowl. So I believe the Raiders will pull this one out. It's going to be a really good game, probably a high-scoring game as well. And I think the um, Raiders will beat this 35 to um, – 31 in a really close game, mm -hmm. and it yeah, comes back good. again to which quarterback can have the ball in his hand at the last second. And I think Josh will do a great job like he did a couple weeks ago against the Eagles. What was your score again? 35, um, 31. 31. Yeah, uh, in, in this game here, I mean, you got, 
I mean, you know, Chris is, you know, self-proclaiming Rob Coach of the Year. I think Mach has done an excellent job on the other side, mm. uh, and I think he's he's being left out of the conversation of Coach of the Year. And then, you know, Leo uh, himself here should also be involved in the decision for Coach of the Year. Uh, Mach is, you know, it, I think he's just and been yeah, underrated. I mean, there's some guys. Yeah, he's, yeah he's I think Hector, too. Hector, too. Hector did yeah, a complete, great. Yeah, he did all a complete three three rebound. Right. So neck did. and neck. He did, but, a you know, you know. <laughs> he did a complete <laughs> rebuild. Yeah, you know, wouldn't throw everybody. Yeah, these uh, these teams that are left are all deserving. They, they've coached well. Uh, in this Raiders 49 matchup, I believe this is is going to be a great game. Uh, you know, you got Josh and Felix, and either one, whichever one loses, it will be their last game of the season. Playing the 49ers last week, I mean, we took them on the brink of elimination, and they could have very well fell apart and blew the game. Uh, and they didn't. I mean, that that's what surprised me most about the 49ers was they were going in thinking that they were going to beat us. Some of them thought it was going to be a close game. Some of them thought we weren't at their class. But, you know, the Packers played their best game of the year against the 49ers, and the 49ers were still able to come out on top in overtime. Wow. Uh, so I want to I wanna give credit to the 49ers for being able to pull that off because it's hard going in as a favorite and then, uh, you know, having to come back from behind at the end to win the game. Now, the Raiders, on the other hand, I believe they played their worst game of the year last week against the Panthers. Uh, there's no way that neither of those teams should be in the same playing field. Uh, and the Raiders should be disappointed in the way they played last week. Now, the Panthers, I believe, played their best game of the year. No yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. I want to give them credit. I mean, at one point, I thought the Panthers could have very well quit and given up. Uh, and then their defense woke up with an interception in the second half. And Randall, uh, even through all the adversity all this season, he threw a pass that could have very well tied the game at the end. And even through another one, uh, with all that pressure with no time left, that could have been very well caught in the other side of the end zone. They could have won it. So, uh, you know, I want to give my kudos to the Panthers, to the to the, uh, to the the Packers, to the Ravens, and to the to the Eagles. I mean, uh, yeah, who, who played a good game. But, but in this game here, I mean – it's going to come down to whoever makes the most plays. The, uh, the I think I still think the best offense in the league is the 49ers, uh, even though they didn't play maybe their best game last week. I think the Packers played a different kind of style of defense that kind of stifled them a little bit. Uh, and, and the Raiders, I mean, this is just two great matches. I mean, the Raiders, what they have behind them is just, championship caliber experience and, and that's what they're going to need to play like to win in this last game i mean this game's going to be real close uh but i think this is the year of the new teams going into the urban bowl and i mm -hmm. think the 49ers will win this game 38 to 37 it's going to be an outstanding game wow 38 to 37 that's 38 37 a, that's a very close game and yeah. i like what all you gentlemen said about the each team that played in the playoffs the first round in the playoffs but um I'm in agreement with uh, Buddy. I think the 49ers are going to upset the Raiders. Uh, I really do. I, I think don't think the you can um, really I, call it an upset, yeah. you know, because, you know, yeah. you can well, argue with They're so close. They're so close. Both teams are really close. This is a real say, urban bowl. The best two say, teams. Oh, when I say upset, I'm going by their seed. Okay. okay. And, and, and that's what I'm talking about. You yeah. know, the Raiders had a top or seat, uh, higher seed than the 49ers, but the 49ers are playing some, some really good ball mm -hmm. this year. Yeah, that's true. So, hey, now we – I just want to make a comment on what Buddy was saying about how the um, 49ers seem to not break down as a unit and not quite stick together. Right. And, you know, they didn't just do this against the Packers. I watched them against the Eagles when they came back and they fell just short. And I watched them against the Vikings in the last game of the season when they were down and they were coming from behind and they stood together as a unit to come out and win. So those kids don't give up. They come out, they play together, and they will fight to the very end. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, it's going to be a really good game, like right. you were saying, with those two teams. And it's just, I'm just going to go with the Raiders right. for the fact that they had that championship caliber and they have the experience. Right. But I'm expecting to see a really good game, probably possibly the second Herbal Bowl of the year because I think that. Right. I mean, so. you guys would say Rob has the most pulling off. I think the 49ers, they have the most pulling offense out there. It sounds like Leo is kissing butt in case he has to play one of them. That's what it sounds like to me. He doesn't want to bump for the feathers. Because like, that's not what he said earlier. That's yeah. not what you said earlier. Mm -hmm. You said you want to play the 49ers, you'll spank them. That's what exactly what you said. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go to that 4 o'clock game. We got the Vikings. And the Cowboys, the Moses-driven Vikings. Yeah, That's what I'm I mean, this about. this was this was dramatic. I mean, against the against the Eagles, I think this was the passing of the torch game. And what this is, this is the first time since I've been a part of the Motel, which has been like seven years, that that the Eagles have not been in the Urban Bowl. They've not played at the very top level. And so I think that what we're seeing is the birth of a new powerhouse in the Vikings. I think what we're going to see is, is a few years, they're going to be good, they're going to build. And I think that what we also saw was the collapse of an empire. I think the Eagles are done. They were almost done before the season even started, even though they had all that talent. 
I think they're going to struggle even putting together a coaching staff, uh, c c players, all that. I think they're going to they're going to have to face adversity they've never faced before in their lives, and and we'll see what kind of character they can build. It can build a deep character, or it can implode completely. Um, that said, I think Pedro has been playing out his mind. That last catch was just incredible. Um, but when I look at this game, you know, I look at the Vikings. They lost the Ravens, Raiders, Packers, 49ers, whereas the Cowboys, they've only lost to the Lions. Now, the Cowboys haven't played anybody good the last few weeks, and they keep squeaking it by. But I think this is where the Cowboys find what they've been looking for. I think this is where the rubber meets the road. I think there's absolutely zero chance that the Vikings can actually win this game. I think that they, they start building something next year, but this year they have zero chance. In fact, you could cancel the game because I think the boys will win this game outright, and, and it'll be the you know the boys have the largest win streak coming into the game. I mean, there's no way the Vikings can win this thing. The boys will win this 32-25 because they like to keep it close and only because they like to keep it close. Mm -hmm. Is the curse over, Chris? The curse is over until next week. All right, cool. The curse is over. You know, like he was saying, I'm the Moses driven. Um, Vikings, they've been playing really, really well. It's like that game against the Eagles was like when Moses took the Israelites out of Egypt. Wow. You mm -hmm. know, but did you guys remember in the Bible that Moses failed to make it to the promised land, which is the urban bowl? So yeah, that sure. comes to an end for Moses. This week he will fail to make it to the, to the <laughs> promised land. And, you know, he, <laughs> it, it comes down right Amen. now when um, he played the Cowboys. And the Cowboys will pull this one out 38 to um, 28. It's going to be a really good game. They'll play well, but like Chris said, we'll keep it close because, you know, we like to play down to our competition. Yes. And um, Moses won't make it to the promised land. I'm sorry, Moses, but good luck next year. Yeah, down yeah, down to your competition, that's huh? True. Wow. Okay. That's how they've been playing all year long. I mean, this game, let, let's, let's first talk about the Vikings, and, and let's talk about that game last weekend. And, and, yeah, I mean, this was supposed to be a year that some of us predicted that the Vikings wouldn't even make the playoffs yeah. because uh, they had to completely rebuild that roster over there after losing a lot of players. Uh, and yet, heck – has has finally been able to, to feat, defeat the Eagles. The Eagles have been holding them out of the Urban Bowl and, and second round of playoffs for years now, and they've finally been able to beat them. And and another thing that I've noticed this, this week is the Vikings were actually out there practicing in this rain for their opponent this week. Mm -hmm. Now, the Vikings were missing their flags. I'm not going to say I know who has them, but rumor has it mm -hmm. that someone – Maybe at this table, might have found yep. an extra bag of flags and is holding them hostage wow. until after the game. Mm. So wow. I'm not going to say who would do that, try to sabotage the team's practice. Did you say after the game? They might give it to him after the game. Oh, yeah, that just points a finger to one person. Yeah, yeah it's not. Mm. Yeah, I'm not going to say who it is. I'm not going to say who it is. But, yeah, so, so, and speaking with Leo, I mean, Leo has been telling me that the Vikings don't have a shot, that there's no way that they will lose so he, he calls this the only second class team left in the playoffs, he told me. And he right? Yeah. Yeah. And he said there's no way that they will lose to this team. He said when they get a man at quarterback, then they'll be scared. Wow. But until they, they do, you know, and they still have that little boy playing quarterback over there who can't see over his rusher, he said they're not gonna have a chance in the world. Now, the Vikings have shown fight all year long, and every game they just find someone to step up, and Pedro has been that leader who's who's been the one able to make them big plays. Uh, and, and Moses, even though he's inexperienced sometimes, he came through in the clutch and threw that pass to Pedro can catch it. So, uh, and, and the Cowboys, on the other hand, wow, while the Vikings are practicing, they're, they're nowhere to be found. Well, I you mean, better it, stop lying. My boys are at practice right now. Thunderstorm or not, if it's raining at this moment, if it continues, my boys are at practice right now. Who's uh, mm. monitoring that practice? Yeah. I have an assistant coach. Yeah, they're definitely. Pastor Mike is out there with them as well. My boys are out there practicing. Mm. Shenanigans, because I was just at Scanlon, and uh, they were definitely not there. So unless they practice later, I mean, they're not taking this game serious. Now, talent-wise, the Cowboys, again, I mean, like I said, if Leo doesn't win an Urban Bowl this year, this would be probably one of the worst coaching jobs in the history of uh, Timoteo. No pressure to Leo. Besides the Panthers. Mm. I mean, like, could be true, could be true. Seahawks, you know, I mean, Seahawks you know. were, were too, I guess. Okay. But uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, with all the time, you know, this, even if you combine the pa the Panthers, Packers, and Seahawks, you still don't Who's get a still, roster. About the Packers, I just like to throw them out there. <laughs> you still don't get a www.tuntelfootball.com slash Packers. Uh, you still uh, you still don't get uh, you still don't get the roster that you have there. I mean, being though, I mean, you know, they have a real quarterback. I mean, the Cowboys. Until I see them play at their best game, I think this is another week where they're going to slip up. I've been riding the Cowboys all year long, and this week I'm going to say the Vikings won it more. Mm. The Vikings will win this game, uh, and I think that this is where the Cowboys break down too. I mean, this is I don't know if they can recover.
from a loss like this. We know. Oh. Not, we so, score. buddy, you have. You, what, oh, the score. score? I, I got this game going 32, probably the 25. It'd be a close game, but the, the Cowboys score one at the end. But I think the Vikings take it all the way through. So, buddy, you have gone against the grain with both of the coaches down there and picked your Urban Bowl game being the 49ers and the Vikings, which I think would be probably a, a, the most high scoring game in, in, in Urban Bowl in T Motel history. But uh, I do want to say, I want to jump back to where you were talking about the coach of the years. I do want to give Leo credit. I think that he is, uh, he should be a candidate for coach of the year. But in my mind, I'm looking at what Hector had. Hector, I think he, he's the leading candidate for coach of the year because of what he had, what we predicted their team to do, and how they've overcome the thing, especially with a rookie, rookie quarterback. I mean, Leo has had all pup players. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going. That's going yeah, to. It's going to be a good debate. Down. It's going to be a good that's debate. That's going to kind of knock him five. down with the voting. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob, he was coach of the year. Uh, uh, what? Uh, not last year, but the year before. Um, you, you know, in the March, mm -hmm. March, March could be up there. But, good, yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, I'm just really impressed with mm -hmm. Leo. But um, you know, Leo, uh, Pastor Mark asked mm -hmm. me to. Mark. Uh, Pastor, oh, Mark from Pastor the Mark from the Lions asked me to give you that, give you this money. Is this a prize? Yeah, no, he, he, he wants to. No, he wants to. He wants you to get yeah. that money. That's that Lions, down payment. Lions coach, that's right that down. That's the down payment for the. Uh, yeah, for your, your new, uh, your new, your new truck. This is not even half what Pastor yeah. Mike gives me. Well, that's a down payment. Oh, okay, okay. you have to talk to Mark. Yeah, to Mark. So. <laughs> hey, well, that hey, that's going to do it for Timo Tail TV, and uh, this Saturday we're going to have. The two Urban Bowl play, uh, Urban Bowl teams, uh, announced with the victories. Buddy has it, 49ers Vikings. Chris has it, Raiders Cowboys, and Leo has it, Raiders Cowboys. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. It's mm -hmm. it's just going to be a great game this Saturday. So guys, don't don't forget your verse, Isaiah 58, one. Don't be a punk. Mm. Shout out loud and tell my people of their sins. See you at Scam. He just said, huh? <laughs> <laughs>